Anybody know any tricks or can do anything funny? We had a, like that roll the open thing. Anybody entertaining out here? Just a little, but it felt good. All right, then just everybody say roll the open. Roll the open. Awesome. Next time, do something funny before you do it, though. <laughs> Here we go. That's making a good day. Let's get a tiger. Give it up for Debbie Gibson, everyone. Oh. Oh. Yes! Oh. I'm going to start crying and laughing so hard. Oh. I did not do that. Oh. 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 Now, here's Jason. everybody thank you okay now wait a minute y'all you guys are talented you nobody said anything funny in the lobby anyway and also let me tell you what just happened i had something else i was going to say when i came out here and i'm standing back there and all of a sudden i i hear two very loud thuds uh, like someone was hammering and I thought did did somebody fall were, were the audience fighting with each other did someone hit each other but no it's Stephanie Hansen a foodie queen are you pounding meat or what are you doing over there you're cutting cabbage okay well I, I mean I, I, I cut cabbage a lot and I've never it's never that loud anyway well Hansen's on the show today everybody that's right Plus, <laughs> hopefully she'll get all that out of her system before we start. Uh, and also a docu-series you have to actually see to believe. That's all coming up, but right now, let's start the show. Hit it, Leo. Here we go. <laughs> Audience, give it up for Kendall, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Hello. Hello. I'm groovy. Are you groovy? Yeah, you'll be you'll be happy to hear I took a little vitamin happy shot. Oh, yeah, I needed show. one of those. I know we had a very contentious little meeting today. Our pre-show meeting was not contentious, but no, I think it was we were icy. It was very icy. We were all <laughs> not all. I think we we were some of us were just in little moods, but we're feeling better, aren't we? Uh-huh. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody worry. It's Nobody, gonna be fine. it's, it's going to be just fine. It's mm -hmm. going to be just fine. But uh, well, we're glad that you're here. Now we we were talking about something uh, 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 in that meeting that I realized is a kind of a, uh, not a lightning point, but something relatable to folks, and that is drivers. Mm. And it, it, and yesterday I was on Twitter and I was looking at this thread talking about people not knowing how to drive properly here in Minnesota compared to other parts of the country, specifically when it comes to left lane drivers. Oh. Uh, the thank you. I had a feeling this audience would be with me today. <laughs> Truly, I, look, there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of bigger issues in the world right now, but <laughs> I, I looked on Twitter yesterday and I thought, there was a term that I, I, I read that I thought, oh, this is perfect, and that's phantom bottleneck. Oh. Phantom bottleneck. Okay. And, okay, parts of the crew are nodding their head. A phantom bottleneck is a traffic jam for no reason. Oh. I, I think, God, this audience is good. They're all <laughs> nodding their heads. We do have those. And I saw one person from Chicagoland. Hi, Chicago. And then I saw another person from L.A., and they said the following. Now, this is a generality, but I think it's... They said, look, Chicago and L.A. have worse traffic, but for some reason, we have worse traffic jams because what happens is people in the left lane get in the left lane and they just go 30 miles under the speed limit. And then they, if they would just look in their rearview mirror, they would see they have basically like a funeral procession behind them. They have like a, 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 a caravan of cars. That does happen. That happens mm -hmm. all the time. And then the second thing, and this happened to me yesterday and I wanted to scream, you're on the on-ramp to a highway. Mm -hmm. Thank you, row one. <laughs> you're on the on-ramp to a highway. 
the highway's speed limit is 60 miles an hour. Oh, yes. And the person in front of you is merging onto that highway mm -hmm. at about 17 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Which is so dangerous because this is in, in yeah. traffic people vernacular. Mm -hmm. You got to find your pocket. Yep. You gotta merge. That's what the ramp is for, to accelerate to match the speed of the highway. So for the love, I don't know what the DMV is teaching, but I gotta get a look at that booklet because something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Something is up. Do yeah. you see it? Oh, all the time. I mean on a personal level, I oh, see. Oh, the it audience too. is saying yes too. I love it, yeah. It's fantastic. Anyway, I'm done now. Let's get okay. to the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Let's get started. <laughs> The writer strike is forcing Disney to make some major changes to its movie lineup. So here's the deal. This was the big news out of Hollywood yesterday. Two Avengers movies are getting their release date pushed back by a year. Uh, the next one, it's called Kang Dynasty. I wish it was just Dynasty. But anyway, uh, coming in 2026, Avatar 3 will also get pushed back a year to 2025. And sadly, we were supposed to get a new Star Wars movie in 2025, but now that won't happen until 2026. Most movie releases set for 2023 are still on the schedule because well, the movies are done. Mm -hmm. We'll start to see the effects of the writer strike in the middle of next year. Now, there's lots of other Disney news as well. Mickey was very busy. Uh, Donald, Mickey, Pluto, they're in talks with an Oscar winner to direct another live action movie, this time Bambi. So Sarah Polly, who won Best Adapted Screenplay for her film, Women Talking, is said to be in the running to direct. The movie would be closer to the live action Lion King with CGI generated animals and not like the Little Mermaid, which went a little, you know, Flounder was a little cartoony, but mm -hmm. still lifelike. Right. I have to say, Bambi's my mother's favorite, so I'm going to tread lightly here. Mm -hmm. I and Lion King. I don't know if we need a live action Bambi. Why not? It's one of the Thank oldest Disney movies. Thank you, Middle Row. It's one of the oldest Disney movies. That would be the one that you'd be like, what does it look like? You I know, have old butter later. in my refrigerator. It doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> old, and I love, this is coming from me. I love this. I. You don't love Bambi. I do love Bambi. Don't get me in trouble with my mother, please. I love Bambi. I love Thumper. I love that little skunk. I love all, I love Flower. Wow. But I, I, I just don't think we need this. Is it the death scene? It is a little extra. Well, spoiler alert. Yeah. Bambi's mom dies. No. No, I, I, no, I was fine because, like, the wildebeest scene in Lion I'm fine with that. It's just ice skating. I just don't know if we need it. That's all. I just don't know. Now, look, if it's artistic and beautiful, maybe. I don't know. Now, on to movies that are actually happening within the next year. Next on the dish, Pixar dropped this teaser. I think you're going to like this for Elio. It's about a boy taken to a new universe, and he pretends to be the leader of Earth. Look at this. Hi. Can you hear me? Honey, now is a really bad time. Okay. Bye. I love you. I love you. I love, I love you. This is new. No. 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 Thank you. Whoa. Please state the name of your home world. Uh, Earth. Welcome, leader of uh, Earth. We are the United Advanced Species of the Universe. I think there's been a mistake. You're not the leader of our Earth? Sorry for the mix-up. Commence memory wipe. No, wait! <clears throat> I am the leader of Earth. Cute! Oh, that looks cute. That looks really good. Elio will debut in theaters next March. Again, see? We're still, we're going to be okay with movies with the writer strike through about the middle of next year. And then if this continues, and I think it will, that's when we're going to start to see, a, we're not going to have a lot of movies. Pixar also released the trailer for its next short. This one follows Carl. Remember Carl from Up? Uh, it's called Carl's Date. Look at this. Disney and Pixar invite you on a new adventure with Carl. Made my nose get dead. And Doug. 
Miss Meyer. Likes me. And wants to go out on a date. Huh? I don't know how to date. They're, uh, fun, right? Fun is digging in the dirt and destroying your flowers. <gasps> flowers! There's so much to do. This is not fun at all. You really don't teach old dogs new tricks. I am old. See, <laughs> Disney. So cute. Carl uh, will be in theaters. Actually, you'll see that this week. They're going to show it before the Disney Pixar film Elemental, which opens, oh, uh, which is getting great reviews. I, you know, uh, not being uh, sad, but that sounds like the late Ed Asner. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he voiced it. Hmm. I, I, it before. doesn't sound like a new person. I think probably Ed voiced it. Um, years ago, because huh. uh, it does take years to make these movies, so it makes sure. sense. And I was listening close. That's Mr. Grant. I don't think it's somebody else. Yeah. Right? Doesn't it sound like? Yeah, that, that sounds like Mr. Grant. Well, so. those shorts are only like five to fifteen minutes long. So yeah. it wouldn't have taken him long to voice years ago. You talk about Bambi's mom. There's some. You know, Disney is famous for their sad scenes. Sad. There's Bambi's mom. There's Mufasa, and I don't know about you, but the you know what I'm going to say. The beginning of Up. Is one of the uh, happiest and saddest sequences Disney has ever done. I Have you seen watched it? it? Because I heard it was really sad. You haven't seen Up? Well, I don't like getting my heart broken by fake things. But you like Bambi? Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot more to come. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. You like Bambi? Welcome back. Uh, Watch What Happens Live was new last night. John Hamm and John Slattery were Andy's guests, and that is our Late Night Rewind. I'm curious, uh, for both of you, of my who, was there a time that card. you were going out for a lot of roles where there was one person that you would see auditioning for the same stuff? Like, was there one actor who was your biggest? I used to see Will Arnett. Okay. We're auditioning for commercials. Stephen K. Do you remember Steve K? Yes. He directs now. Um, uh, I don't know. Will Arnett. I used to see all the time. Um, Brad Whitford. Yes. What about you, him? 
I would uh, me and Ken Marino, it seemed like okay. always, always went up for the same thing. Okay. The affable, kind of right. handsome enough, funny guy. Right. That was what we did. All he right. beat me out for a part on Roswell, and I've never forg forgiven him. <laughs> yeah, you and commercials. Commercials are, I've mentioned this before, are so lucrative. You know, mm -hmm. people are like, oh, but uh, my example that I give sometimes, uh, Colin's uncle's friend was the grape in the Fruit of the Loom commercials, or yep. he was the grape or the apple or something. And dude bought a really nice house being a grape uh, for all the Fruit of the Loom underwear commercials. So I'm just saying, they make really Crazy. good money in these commercials. I did a couple before this job, uh, commercial work and auditions. And one of them I think still lives on in Iowa. You can't see my face, but I'm arguing with my husband about the internet. They paid pretty well for that. Really? Yeah. They just want, it was so weird. Was it for an internet company? I, I think so. I don't remember who the client was. I just got paid through my agency. But I went down to Iowa into a spec home, fake argued with my husband, and it was shot from like my mouth to like mid thigh. Like, so you can't see my face. But we're arguing about the internet. I think it's still on in Iowa. Really? Yeah. Real. Hey, Iowa. <laughs> uh, if, if that look, Leo, take, <laughs> take seven. Like Hold, on like Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Take my face out. Thank you. Does this look familiar? I was talking like this. Right there. Does that right look at all familiar to you? Why don't we yeah. later? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Iowa, they're thinking about that right now. Well, well, next in the day, speaking of late night, remember when the late night shows were huge, like in the 90s, the big late night wars with Letterman and Leno? Well, uh, they've been dark uh, since the writer's strike began last month, obviously, but that's not step, uh, stopping what I believe is an ill-timed press release uh, talking about Stephen Colbert inking a new deal. So the top uh, folks over at CBS have confirmed that Stephen has signed on for another three years. The Late Show has been riding high since 2016. The Big Wigs also talked about James Corden's replacement. Uh, it's a show, a game show called At Midnight. It used to be on Comedy Central. He called it a reverent comedy game show with stand-up comics and celebrities as guests, but they weren't able to sign, a, sign up a head writer and a showrunner before the strike. So here's the thing. I, I don't begrudge Stephen Colbert because he doesn't, he's not in charge of CBS communications, right. but maybe it's just me. I don't know if I would send a press release out saying that I'm signing a talent to a bazillion dollar deal mm -hmm. when your company is being accused of not paying the writers well. I don't know, you know what I mean? I, it's, it's not a great look. No. It's not a great look, and I'm just going to assume, I, I'm sure Stephen Colbert isn't probably happy at the timing of the press release. I'm like, great. Look, okay. look, life goes on and deals will happen, but maybe they should have waited mm -hmm. to, hey, Stephen's going to be making all the, great, but maybe resolve the writers next. Uh -huh. Speaking of shows, next in the dish, Pat Sajak's retirement news is just a few days old, and we knew this was going to happen. Already, the jockeying to take his place is underway, uh, including this person who serves as the moderator of a show that you don't watch because you watch our show. <laughs> But, you know, that's an interesting question. I mean, Jeopardy! had its own succession crisis. Mm -hmm, uh, yeah. Hopefully, Wheels got an envelope somewhere that says what to do when, <laughs> when <laughs> Pat packs Whoopi it wants in. wants the job. I want that job. Well, now we've, oh, we figured wow. it out. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be lots of fun. And you know what? Well, whoopster. Oh. Ooh, strong feelings. Yeah. Whoopi uh, wants in, and she's apparently not the only one. The folks at Sony who own and produce Wheel are chatting with Ryan Seacrest. Oh. Called it. Kendall was right. Mm -hmm. Kendall called it yesterday. Remember, Sony is not great with transitions. Uh, they really messed up the Jeopardy transition uh, after uh, Alex Trebek passed away, settling on Ken Jennings and Mayim Bialik. Mm -hmm. So they're not great with these types of transitions. <laughs> this is what... I am wondering, I am wondering what, what does the audience want in that show? Because, you know, when The Price is Right lost Bob, Bob Barker, yes. people thought, oh, Drew Carey was an interesting choice because he was a comedian, he was an actor, he wasn't um, a master of ceremonies like, like Bob. 
I don't, but the, the price is right is flashier than Wheel of Fortune. I don't know if the host function on Wheel is the same as Price is Right. What I mean by that is you need someone a little demure because that host response is just to keep the show going. Right. The host isn't the star of that show. The contestants are, and I would argue Vanna is, really. Mm -hmm. I think Vanna, I really do mean that. I think Vanna is more important than the host. Mm -hmm. So I think the audience at that time for that show, they want an even keeled person. Now look, I, Ryan is a great, he's a master of live television, but come on, I, g give somebody else a, one of those jobs, you know, somebody different. He would be great. They could pick, I mean, they picked Pat Sajak was a weatherman out in LA when he got that job. And he famously said, listen, it was great working in local news out there because these decision makers are watching you every day. So they could pick someone that none of us know just like they did with him, because it clearly worked last time. Yeah. Good. My contract is up next month, <laughs> I'm just saying. I could be Vanna if yeah. she wants to retire. <laughs> My, I'll miss you too. I'll miss you, buddy, I'll miss you too, but I'm up at the end of August. The timing works out real well if Sony's watching. Yeah. I can spin a wheel, you know what and I mean? And if Vanna wants to retire too, I come with him. That's right. Like really cheap. You would make a great Vanna. Really cheap. Yes. Really cheap. Just push the button. Oh my God. I get manicures. What a great, what a, it's like, we it's like a, do it. it's a combo a meal, a, a fish filet and hush yeah. puppies, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Eric, can you make us a like little Or chicken demo? planks. I didn't mean to call you hush puppies. What? You are chicken planks. Long John Silver's combo meal oh, is what okay. I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Sony, I'm telling you, we're available and we're kind of cheap. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just, right Just saying. We're cheap for the first contract, I'll say that. <laughs> Next in the dish, let, let the ultimate girls trip begin. Uh, I saw this yesterday. Ramona Singer posted some photos to her Instagram. I'm really excited because this means that the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip uh, Roni edition has begun shooting. Sonia, there's Ramona, Kelly, ben, uh, Ke Kelly Kalor, and there's Kelly. Satchels of gold! Uh, and only people that watch Roni get that reference, but that's all right. Uh, I have been, I am more excited about this show than I've been about Housewives in a very long time because this is the cast we want. Mm -hmm. These are the OGs. I want to see them partying and going bananas in St. <laughs> Bart's. And uh, isn't this Scary Island too? Is this, this is Scary Island. Okay. Yeah, this is their returning, I believe, to Scary Island where <laughs> still one of the best pieces of reality TV. We don't have a premiere date, but it'll be on Peacock. Next in the dish, Sean Mendez is confused as he approaches, I'm not, I'm just saying this is what he said, as he approaches his 21st birth, 25th birthday. Weren't we all confused at 25? Right, just saying. I mean, I really was confused. Uh, in a recent interview, I was still dating women at that point, I think, yeah. No, I was, I was out by then. In a recent interview, Sean says he's con uh, in a confused place, but knows there are people in his life who he deeply loves. He says over the last year or so, he struggled in the studio to find his voice. Uh, Sean has been on and off again with Camila Cabello, and right now the two are, are the uh, off switches on. So here's, I'm gonna come at this probably from a surprising way. Oh, please. I, and I mean this, I'm not being uh, glib because I don't like to joke about stuff like this. I did it a couple times and I'm like, it's not right. I don't know if I was Sean, if I would use the word confused in this era, because all the internet people are going to make assumptions uh -huh. and talk about his relationship and his sexuality mm -hmm. and this. It just puts, when you make a statement like that and you don't, when you put that into a vacuum, people fill it with whatever they want right. and they project stuff onto it. So right. I feel bad for the kid because that's the last thing he needs is everyone going, what, well, what do you mean by confused? They're right. going to Jessica Fletcher this up. <laughs> you know, that's a murder she wrote reference, everybody. But yeah, you know what I mean? And it just, then he's going to have to answer more personal questions, which he doesn't want. He wants to focus on his mental health. And genuinely, I mean, to your point, but for real, like, wasn't everyone confused about life at 25? You're kind of like, okay, for me, I'd been out of college for three years. You're working. You're like, is this what real life is like? Yeah. Is this what adulthood is like? Well, my fr I mean, uh, quarter life crisis. My friend yes. Alexis from the radio show talks about it frequently. She mm -hmm. and I was with her 
when she was 25. I, I'm seven years older than Alexis. I was in my 30s, but she talked about a quarter life crisis. I did not have that. I had a 29 year old crisis. Uh, oh, but close. 29 I mean, was real. I was like, what the hell is what this? Is yeah, this but, life? Uh, <laughs> and I'm feeling it now almost at 49. I'm just telling you, but yeah. Midlife, yeah. quarter life, midlife. Isn't yeah. That fun? I just realized that, oh, God, I'm going to be 49 in two months. And that you just, are. That just hit me like it's a. Yeah. Be great. What? Yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm one year closer to 50. I'm excited about my 50s. Heck yeah. Yeah, Oprah and Tina Turner are like their 50s. You know uh -huh. what I mean? And I trust both of them. Anyway, time to meet our first JVIP of the week. Today, it's Tracy Gakin from Vandas Heights, Minnesota. Uh, she wrote to us. She loves how positive the show is. And she says, all the staff, we feel like family. Tracy says she can't come away from watching the show without feeling pure joy. Well, that makes us happy. She uh, always counts on us to lift her spirit and make her laugh. Tracy's going to get a Jason Show mug. She's also entered to win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in the audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture World, and a $150 gift card to the Institute of Advanced Aesthetics. We're going to take a break. Stephanie Hansen and more when we return. Back after this. Coming up in just a little bit, she's our foodie queen. Stephanie Hansen is here with some great fixins for Father's Day. Then it is the docu-series almost 10 and a half million people are watching. You're going to get the truth. You might not like the truth. The curious case of Natalia Grace. Oh my goodness. That and more when we come back. Well, it is time to get that grill fired up for Father's Day. Uh, and our first guest today has the perfect slaw to go with everything. Give it up for our foodie queen, Stephanie Hansen. Okay, both our dads are dead, but if yours is alive, <laughs> you want to make him some Probably slaw. the best start to a segment ever. You know. Welcome to our Father's Day segment. You're looking at two people whose dads are you're dead. Doing yeah, better than yeah. Most. yeah. All right. Well, I thought I know it was kind of. I mean, it's it's a factual it is factual. thing. Yeah. We're factual here. We yeah. we deal in facts. Uh huh. So we're making a slaw 
that you can serve with like grilled chicken, grilled salmon, grilled ribs, grilled meat, any of the proteins you want, or you can, I'll show you a different thing that we can do with it where you can serve it with no protein. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead. Do you know how to cut a cabbage? Cause you were making fun of me at the start of the show. Well, I think the studio audience is with me. I, I, I'm, I was making fun of you. I was making fun of you because it sounded like you were opening coconuts out here. I mean, so yeah, I, but I, I do don't know. What I do is I like go like this, and then I just thwack, thwack, thwack until it cuts through. We do have a chef in the audience, and he is horrified at my knife skills, and rightly so. I am a home chef. I've never had chef training. Perhaps that should be a segment that we do on the show. How yeah. about that? Okay, but what are you doing? So how I'm are you? I'm cutting out the core of the cabbage because when you cut red cabbage, which is how we're going to make our slaw, you don't really want that part. No. It's a little tough. It's not going to like kill anybody. You can still eat it, but I just don't love it. Okay. So then I'm going to cut this in like quarters because it makes it easier. And we're just going to make really thin shreds. Okay. Notice my purple nail polish I wore for the occasion. You, I mean. Yeah, don't think I don't think about you. You thought of everything. Okay, so we've got all of our slaw in here, right? We are going to add matchstick peppers, so it's going to be real pretty. Peppers and coleslaw? Yes. Okay. It's delicious. Okay, I'm with you. I'm, I'm going to go. I shouldn't have said it like that. Oh, peppers and coleslaw. Cilantro. Yeah. Here's the secret ingredient, mint. You know how you have those Thai salads and they have such beautiful flavoring to them? Yeah. It's because of the mint. So we've got all of that in our bowl, and now we're going to make our dressing. Okay. Now we're going to just, I'm going to, I have a measuring, but I like to eyeball. So we're going to do four tablespoons of olive oil. Okay. Jason, do you ever use sesame oil? I do sometimes. I actually just made sesame broccoli. Oh, yum. Did yeah. you roast it and then have a little vinaigrette? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I did, Steph. Sesame oil smells just like sesame peanut butter. It's my oh, favorite thing. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to give us a lot of flavor in that oil. We've got some rice wine vinegar. We're going to use about a quarter cup. Again, you need a lot Japanese of dressing. Guessing. Yeah. Okay. You need a lot of dressing on this slaw because it gets dry. Yeah, and you just want a lot of flavor. Okay, yeah. I'm going to show you a weird little hack. You ready for it? I'm, I am Hanson ready. Hanson hack. Hanson hack. Here we go. What are you doing? I need to use honey. So I'm just going to spray my bowl, and I need about three or four tablespoons of honey. So I'm just going to use my little honey boy here. I guess he's not a boy. He's a bear. Yeah. And he watch. could be a boy bear. It'll just slide right out. Oh, I need to put it in here. Almost made a fail. Oh, there. so the nonstick spray. Yeah, helps it slide right out versus like it's stuck in your bowl. Oh, that's a nice little Hanson yeah. hack. Little Hanson hack. Yeah. OK, we're going to add a little soy sauce. Some grated clove or grated garlic, not clove. <laughs> All right, here's how I do. You know my microplane. Yeah, Steph my loves her tool. microplane. Yeah. It's the tool of life. It is. We're gonna add a little ginger. Now I like to use fresh ginger, and you can microplane ginger too. I don't know if you know that, but it's very easy to do. Okay. So you'd freeze it, and then you can just leave it in the freezer. So whenever you need it, you just microplane a little hunk. Okay. So that's a good hack. That's a good okay, little hack. We're gonna do a little lemon juice or uh, lemon, zest, lemon zest. Lime zest. Okay. Inside, you don't have to right in right in the. I'm just doing it right inside my salad here. Okay. I'm gonna zest yeah. the whole lime. I called it a lemon, didn't I? Yeah, Thank you, lime. Ladies. Yeah. All right, and then watch this hack. Whoops. That's all right. Another hack, you guys. I just learned this trick. I have always been juicing my limes by putting this in the little cradle and going like that. Yeah. That's wrong. Mind blowing. You turn it upside down. Yeah. Why they make it look like you're supposed to set that in there, I don't know. But ready? Yeah. You get more juice by doing it the opposite way. Oh, I guess. Who knew? I, I had no idea. I actually did. I, I, you knew. Yeah, You're because impressive. I make a lot of, I make um, my own version of the Skinny Girl Margarita. So we go through a lot of limes. Yeah, that's so, amazing. Yeah. I had no idea. Someone saw me do it on TikTok. Yeah. Okay, little red pepper flakes, little salt. I, I think we got everything all in here. I was going to say, the thing that takes the most time is the dressing, it looks like. And the just, you have to No, cut I'm not being, stuff. I'm just saying that that's the, okay, shake it up. Wow. Shake, 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 shake your booty. It's beautiful. Shake your booty. This is my friend, everybody. This we is my friend. Okay. okay. 
So here we go. We're just gonna dress our salad. Now I try to use half the dressing at first just to get it going a little bit. And then if it feels dry, I'll add more. Okay. Now, if your family likes edamame, if you want to add peas, let's say you are really excited about sesame seeds or wonton crisps, you could make this all different kinds of ways. I like edamame. I would absolutely put edamame. How about in that. mandarin oranges? Nope, don't. Some not a fan. Some people like nope. that. Not a fan. You're gonna top Too it. Too sweet. With you know what? Peanuts? Too sweet. I don't need what? Peanuts. I love peanuts you all could also day, use every day. Sunflower seeds. Okay. You could use any kind of nut you want, cashews. Okay. You could use those spicy cashews with the sesame seeds on them from Trader Joe's. Because we would want be texture. Good. Yeah, so that's it. But this salad, you guys, will sit all day. Like, so you'll put it in the refrigerator, but it's not going to be weird with the mayonnaise. It's not going to get all soggy. It literally holds up. I have served this five days after I've made it, and I still had a good hefty crunch. Oh. So it's great for large groups. If you're like having a cabin weekend, you make it on a Friday, you can still eat it on a Sunday. We have more with Steph. She's going to be answering your food questions a little bit later in the show. I'm going to try this and more. Stay with us back right after these messages. Okay, I want to try. Welcome back. It is uh, the newest hit show on Max. It used to be HBO Max, now it's Max. It is a docu-series about Natalia Grace, um, and it comes to us uh, from Investigation Discovery, ID, my mom's favorite. She was allegedly six years old when she was adopted from Ukraine, but that might not be exactly true. Since it premiered May 29th, more than 10 million people have watched it, in including me. I'm actually pretty obsessed at this point. Here's a look at the trailer. You're gonna get the truth. I will pre-warn you, you might not like the truth. We were in a very tight-knit family. April 26th, 2010, that's the day that we adopted Natalia. We had no idea what we were dealing with. She's not six. She was an adult. You could just tell. I'm like, whoa. Natalia was told her new birthday at the orphanage in Ukraine. She threatened to stab my sons. I definitely didn't feel safe around Natalia. You've adopted a kid, and now they're trying to kill you. I mean, it's the stuff of a horror movie. She tried to poison and kill my wife. One night, I opened my eyes, and Natalia is standing at the foot of the bed. 
with a knife in her hand. But is that true? I, audience, I gotta tell you, this is wackadoodle, nutter butter, wackadoodle crazy. I mean, it really is. Every character in here, it's like six episodes long. I don't know who to believe. Um, at one moment, you believe the parents. At the other moment, you think, uh, Natalia, the little girl, maybe adult, is up to something. You, every episode, you kind of change. Right off the bat, you think, oh my goodness, because, and I'm gonna be careful saying this, or you know, we are morning television, they allegedly realized something was up because right, at, well, first of all, they adopted her from this strip mall, mm -hmm. which I mean, For I real. am not joking. For real. There they was show like, video right, right? Yes, yes. He was like, there was like an abandoned jimboree and then this converted uh, room. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, right away, you're like, really? And then they get her home, they get her home mm -hmm. and they went to give her a bath mm -hmm. and she's supposed to be six. She, this is how I'm gonna say this, she had body hair. Uh-huh. And front row just passed out. <laughs> Everybody in the front row is like, why did we oh. come Thursday? Yeah. Sorry. I was told when I signed up for the Jason show, I was told there would be no talk of body hair. Anyway, so. Mm -hmm. That is just the beginning. And then at the end, you're, you're like, wait a minute. The parents are just, the dad, I, I don't even know what to say about mm -hmm. the dad. All I know is there's twists and turns at every, in every episode. And if she does look familiar, she was interviewed by Dr. Phil a couple seasons ago. And you are really questioning the whole time, is she six? Was she six? Right. Well, is she in her 20s? It's, you watched it. Mm -hmm. I watched, I wasn't going to watch it. Jordan was watching it and I just got sucked in. I was like, what is this? Yeah. And uh, you don't know if it's, you're mad at her, you're mad at the parents, you're mad at the orphanage. Like, who's the freak here that's lying about all of this? My, my, my friend Alexis from the radio show, she had finished all of them and she told me this morning that the last episode, mm -hmm. the last six seconds, changes everything what like everything you thought changes like in the last six seconds oh, so now you know me all i want to do now is fast forward to the last episode but i'm not going to i'm not going to but watch with us it's called the curious case of natalia grace it's on max right now mom if you're watching stop watching this show and go watch that one i'm just telling you i love you yeah you'll love it mom <laughs> We'll be right back. Hanson's answering your food questions when we return. Back in a moment. Which episode are you on? Oh.
might be true. Anyway, welcome back. We're here with my buddy Stephanie Hansen, and now uh, she's answering your questions in our Ask Stephanie segment. First up is Deb. Hi, Deb. She emailed us with this question. Hey, Stephanie, why does potato salad or anything else that uses mayo turn watery overnight? I have tried chilling potatoes, eggs, and onions overnight, and then adding mayo. Mer, thank you in advance. It, it is an inevitable fact that when you boil something in water, it's going to release that water when it sits overnight. So one thing you could try with potato salad is to steam the potatoes. There'd be a little less water content in there. That's hard to do with macaroni. So if you're doing like a macaroni salad, make sure you rely on the al dente side of things because it's going to absorb and release that water. And you know, a little water is fine. You can either dump it out or just stir it back in and... It's fine. It doesn't mean that your salad's bad. It just means it's maybe a little watery. You can also put a little paper towel wad in there and like tip your your bowl oh. so that the water goes into the paper towel and then take that paper towel out, stir it up, and serve it. Uh, that's that's not an official. Like, no, thing, I like that though. No, it does work. Next up is Travis. What's up, Travis? Uh, Stephanie, the rhubarb is going insane in my garden. How long do I have to harvest it? I'm so glad you asked this question, Travis. You can, it's the best when you harvest it, re harvest it right away. And those red stalks are so fresh and juicy. But you can harvest rhubarb throughout the summer and you just want to make sure that you're leaving a third of the plant intact because if you take more than that it doesn't have enough energy to regrow for the next year but we're still making like i have three different patches i'm picking from because you're harvesting your I own am, rhubarb and i've made a ton of rhubarb syrup we're making our rhubarb bars i'm making rhubarb pies rhubarb 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 yeah <laughs> is it abundant it is abundant but i'm getting to the point now where i have to be careful of my patches because i can't over pick them don't overpick your patch. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Great words to live by, Steph. That's right. <laughs> Listen to Aunt Steph, kids. Uh, Steph, ironically, asked Steph, um, I bought a ton of strawberries because they're so cheap right now. What are some easy and delicious ways to use them besides, besides strawberry pie? Okay, three things. Strawberry salads, just, you know, make a fresh strawberry salad, add a little mozzarella, a little goat cheese, some nuts, whatever your spring green is, toss it up, balsamic vinaigrette. Second thing, compote, take those strawberries, add sugar, put it in a, a skillet and let it get so that it releases its juices and then you can freeze that in one cup portions. So you have that for cheesecake desserts, you have that for ice cream, you have that for making fresh malts, you have it all year round. Oh, that's a really good idea. Okay, third thing, there was just a recipe in the New York Times that I was dying to try and I'm hoping to maybe try it on the show still. It's you a do whatever you want. drop biscuit for strawberry shortcake, but it has roasted strawberries in the biscuit batter. Oh. So should I make that and bring it on the show? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're gonna do that because it just, like who can resist a biscuit with like big chunks of strawberries sticking out of it and then you'd slice it with your whipped cream and your strawberry compote. Listen lady, there's only one person making biscuits on this show. <laughs> <laughs> These are not your kind of biscuits. Cause There's I drop don't, biscuits, yeah. I'm not good at your kind of biscuits because the raw, I do drop <laughs> biscuits. Yeah, so drop super biscuits are yeah, very different. All right, I'm going to do that. That's a good idea, but let me, can I give you advice on that one? Please. The same thing with the watery, the you got to get rid of the moisture as much as you can out of the whatever you're mixing with the biscuit dough because it will affect the rise of the biscuit. Oh. Trust me when I say that. Okay, yeah. that's why this recipe I think is so cool because it roasts the yeah. strawberries. Yep. It's so a good that's idea. A tip. Next is Gerard. Hi, Gerard. Uh, hey, uh, Steph, I'm a single guy in my 30s. Uh, I no longer have roommates. Steph, I think you're going to be asked out on a date here. Yeah, I might go out with him. I'm feeling bad for him. Yeah, I no longer have roommates, but now I'm faced with questions I've never had before. Like when I make spaghetti, I only use a third or half of the sauce. How long is the other half good for? Okay, two things. When you open your spaghetti, Take the leftovers and just portion it out in however much you're going to use and then freeze that because you know I freeze everything. So you do. That's the start. But if you haven't frozen it, this is not a scientific answer, but tomato has a lot of acid in it. If there's no mold on the top, you can use it. And even if there is mold, I've scraped it off and used it too. Now, I have. I'm not a doctor and I'm not like advising you to do any unscientific things. You guys are 
moms ate everything. We had four kids. Our mom would scrape the cheese off and go, here kid, eat it. Right in front of us and we would. I don't pay attention to sell by dates. I'm terrible about that. You come to my house, you're not gonna get sick, I promise. Leo, take, Leo, take five, please. All emails to stephaniesdish.com. Yeah. No, I get it. Look, yeah. It's, it's an acidic based product. I know. I mean, I, it can go way longer than you think. I know. It just, I, we, I just talked about this. I'm a person who, even if it's a day past the expiration date, gone. Oh, you guys, it freaks those me are out. suggestions. They're not based in science. Don't say that out loud. It's true. Because my mom is with me, my mother in law will eat it until it grows a tail All and legs. Moms did because they didn't have expiration dates I am dates not in joking. Absolutely. Oh, oh, cheese will grow a tail and eyeballs and she'll chop off the eyes and eat it. 100% no, I'm no, with your, no, your mother-in-law No, on I'm with my mom. Nope, it's gone. Yeah. Expiration date, out. Out. Long Stephanie, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> For all things Stephanie, go to stephaniesdish.com. We'll be right back, back in a moment. Yeah, I know. Actually, I think my mom is like that too. It is time for the world's shortest segment. Good news if you've watched food shows on Netflix and you start craving what they're making, Netflix will soon give people a chance to try the dishes from some of its popular shows. Netflix Bites will soon open in Los Angeles. Chefs from shows like Is It Cake and Chef's Table will create the dishes. This is a pop-up restaurant. It's going to open June 30th. It's not clear uh, yet how long that will stick around. That is a really good idea. I'm mm -hmm. saying they need to do a tour of that, actually. Mm -hmm. You can have that idea for free, Netflix. We'll be right back, back in a moment.
stars right there. Uh, welcome back. Hey, don't forget, we have uh, spots available this week and next. Be a part of our show. We always have a great time here in the summer. If you want tickets to our show, go to eventbrite.com and search for The Jason Show. Stephanie, you okay over there? Okay, just making sure. Okay. The chopping continues. Search for The Jason Show. Pick a date. They'll send you a reminder and only pick a day. Where you can actually make it. That's right. Tomorrow, the Thrifty Traveler is back with the hottest travel deals of the season. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.